Okay, so let's drill down to the individual synapse level. Um, this is a overly complicated diagram of how the of, of how the synapse works, but at least it has most of the key elements. So let me walk you through how that happens. So again, you have the overall neuron. If the neuron um, uh, gets above that critical threshold in its membrane potential, it's going to fire the action potential and it's going to send this alarm out to other neurons. And the actual communication of that signal to other neurons involves uh, sending out neurotransmitter. So in the, in the most typical case, this is glutamate. Uh, that, that's the name of the neurotransmitter. Um, and it's released from these little sacs, these little balls uh, that contain the neurotransmitter. Um, they fuse with this membrane here on the presynaptic side. This thing is called the terminal bouton. It is French. Um, and so they merge with that uh, membrane of the terminal bouton, uh, and that kind of pops out the, the juice, <laughs> the, the neurotransmitter that's been sitting in these little, little sacs. Um, it very quickly diffuses across this little synaptic cleft. Um, these diagrams make that cleft look like pretty, a pretty big distance. It's actually a tiny microscopic distance, doesn't have far to go. Um, and then the, the neurotransmitter will bind to postsynaptic receptors on the other side. So this is the receiving side. Um, those are the spines that we saw on the dendrites of the receiving neuron. Um, and in this postsynaptic density uh, of the spine, you have these AMPA receptors that uh, then receive this neurotransmitter. When the neurotransmitter binds to the AMPA receptor, it actually changes the kind of chemical properties, the electrical properties of that AMPA receptor and cause it to twist open. And so there are these kind of containers that you can get that kind of open and close by twisting. Uh, they're kind of like, you know, if you twist it, it's, it's more tight. Uh, if, you, if you untwist it, it's more open. And that untwisting opens up the channel and allows sodium ions, just as in normal table salt, uh, NaCl. Those are really, salt is really the fundamental uh, ingredients for neural com computation. So salt, uh, sodium flows into your AMPA receptors. Uh, these have positive charges. And so that increase in positive ions, uh, positive charge into the postsynaptic cell makes that cell more excited. And so this is an excitatory synapse. It corresponds to the GE, uh, that positive uh, conductance of the excitatory conductance um, that we talked about in the tug of war. So this glutamate sodium AMPA receptor system, that is the excitatory uh, drive. And this is really most of your thoughts are supported by that simple chemical system. So this is really the primary information processing workhorse of the neocortex is driven by glutamate, letting these sodium ions in uh, and exciting that postsynaptic cell. Okay, so there's also a few other players over here that we'll talk more about in the learning chapter uh, uh, involving the NMDA receptors, voltage-gated calcium channels, um, and even these other metabotrophic glutamate receptors. All three of those are involved in learning processes that are driven fundamentally by calcium. So they uh, allow calcium ions to go in. The NMDA channels are opened by that same neurotransmitter glutamate, but instead of letting sodium in, they mainly let calcium in. And calcium, as I said before, uh, builds strong brains as well as bones. Um, and so calcium turns out to do a huge amount of work throughout the body um, as a major signaling uh, pathway and it's it's really utilized in the brain to drive learning. That learning ends up changing the number of AMPA receptors in the synapse, and that's how your knowledge changes over time. And again, we'll go back over that in the learning chapter, but just to sort of give you a preview, that's what this other stuff is doing. So the synapse has contained within it not only this ability to kind of get this excitatory message across, but also the ability to change the strength of that uh, synapse. And that's probably why our brains have this chemical gap here uh, in communication, because it's taking an electrical signal, the action potential uh, involved, you know, triggered by that membrane potential, uh, 
that kind of gets electrically amplified through this spiking process that comes, you know, coming down this, comes barreling down this uh, axon, and it triggers the release of this kind of chemical process, the release of this neurotransmitter. And overall, it's like really complicated. Like, why not just keep it all electrical? Um, and the idea is that probably we need to have this chemical stuff going on in order to allow the system to learn. Um, that it's much easier to have kind of chemical processes that can be regulated by other factors uh, on the on the postsynaptic side, um, and that can determine how the synapse changes its strength over time as a function of this kind of overall uh, activation of the uh, sending and receiving neurons. So that's why this, the synapse is more complicated than just kind of sending the message. It also is the seat of learning. There's also other synapses that are involved in letting chloride ions, so sodium chloride, that's what table salt is. Uh, chloride is the inhibitory uh, system that we talked about in that tug of war. Um, and there, the, the, the cells are releasing the neurotransmitter GABA. They bind to GABA channels, um, and the GABA channels let the chloride in, and that's the negative side of the tug of war. So those are the two primary neurotransmitter uh, kind of receptor systems in the neocortex. So you can actually go through and trace exactly how this tug of war operates at the level of uh, the electrical potentials, uh, the forces of electricity, and this really interesting additional force of concentration gradients. Um, so it turns out that just like, you know, if you put milk in a cup of coffee, it always diffuses out. It never stays in one concentrated lump. Um, these ions, these chloride and, so and sodium ions, are always wanting to spread out and become maximally evenly distributed in the, in the fluid here in the cells and outside the cells. And that force, that diffusion force, kind of works against the electrical forces in very intricate ways. And that produces this whole dynamic of the tug of war. And so I won't go into the full details on that. And again, this is beyond the scope of typical intro psychology classes, but I just wanted to let you know that that's, that's kind of how it all works out. So to step back and summarize, this is the overall story about neurons, okay? Neurons take these inputs that release neurotransmitters that cause uh, their, their receptor channels to open up, um, and those excitatory signals come in um, that's called depolarization, a term I didn't mention before. So when you get excited, you're depolarizing, you're, you're getting the cell less negatively polarized, turning it into more excitatorily uh, activated, um, changing the membrane potential. Um, and so that's what's happening through these electrical signals coming in through the dendrites. Um, this is transmitted by the synapses, the receiving side synapses uh, on the dendrites. The cell body integrates this information, and then if it's above threshold, an action potential is fired through the axons. Um, and so that's the, the spike that's sent down the axon, uh, and then that triggers, again, release of neurotransmitter from this neuron's axons, uh, the terminal bouton, and then uh, repeating the process over again, opening up the receptors on that uh, receiving side neuron, um, and, uh, and so on. Uh, and again, the GABA is the inhibitory uh, pathway uh, involving uh, letting chloride ions, which are negative, have that inhibitory effect. Um, and then uh, sodium is excitatory with that positive charge, uh, and that is driven by the glutamate pathway. So that's the kind of summary. These bold uh, terms you want to know about uh, for tests and stuff and understand kind of the, the key points about how these communication processes work to cause the neuron to be a detector that is compressing information and uh, kind of distilling the key detector kind of signal. Something interesting is coming in. I'm gonna tell all the other neurons about it. This is the process by which that information chain of communication takes place. And just a few uh, additional terms that we'll pick up again in the next chapter. Uh, agonist is something that works like a given neurotransmitter. So you can have 
uh, not only like glutamate, but you could have something that, that is an agonist for glutamate. Uh, and actually more typically, you have things that are agonists for GABA uh, in terms of drugs. All drugs are either agonists or antagonists, at least most are, uh, that have effects on the brain. Um, so like Valium is an agonist for GABA. It activates that GABA uh, inhibitory pathway and pulls your neurons back down making them more inhibited. Um, an antagonist blocks the effects of a given uh, neurotransmitter pathway. So it, it reduces the efficacy of that uh, normal pathway. So these are kind of the opposite terms, agonist, antagonist. Uh, reuptake is taking the neurotransmitter back out of the synapse. And this is an important process for kind of clearing out the signal and allowing a new signal to kind of be generated and, and processed. Um, and a lot of uh, drugs affect this reuptake process. Uh, cocaine and SSRIs like Prozac affect the reuptake process. And so that's one way in which uh, these neurotransmitters uh, can be modulated by drugs. Um, and then finally, there's this category of uh, neuromodulatory substances in the brain. Um, and these are, are different kinds of neurotransmitters, not like glutamate or GABA, uh, more like dopamine and uh, acetylcholine uh, and serotonin that have really broad effects on different pathways in the brain. And so these, you know, it's, it's neuromodulator is a sort of more technical term that we use to describe neurotransmitters that have broader effects changing or modulating processing across a wide range of, of uh, the brain. Um, so we'll, we'll, again, pick up on these uh, terms, but I just want to introduce them here while we're talking about these signaling pathways.